Guys, who else is curious about whether or not these gas busting or supposed gas mitigating charging handles, if they actually work? Uh, better yet, who else wants to find out if one or two charging handles keep the gas out of your face hole better than the rest? Lord knows I do, and today we are kicking off this multi-part video testing with the standard bearer GI charging handle compared to the uber popular Radian Raptor SD and the latest and greatest from Breek Arms, Sledgehammer. This is gonna be a wild ride, so let's talk gas busting AR-15 charging handle. Hey guys, Randy here at AT3Tactical.com and this is charging handle testing part one. We're finally here and for this first one, you get to find out and I get to find out together how the first two and arguably most popular charging handles for gas busting, how they stand up to your standard mil-spec GI handle. Let's kick it off today immediately because there's a lot to see with a little who, what, where, why, and when, and how of how we got to this completely non-PhD, non-peer-reviewed, non-scientific journal testing procedure. But hey, we're trying to do anything better than blindly trusting marketing bullet points on the packaging or maybe a few guys' opinions on just a few of the dozens and dozens of charging handles out there that say they take care of gas. Starting with our rifle, we built this guy. It's a seven and a half inch, 300 blackout with the AT3 tactical barrel, uh, the Odin Works adjustable gas block so we can make it the gassiest possible, uh, the Griffin Armament Optimus 9, it's a 30 cal suppressor thanks to our neighbors uh, in Wisconsin, uh, 115 grain black tips from Sabre, and so much CLP and lube that it brings me back to the army ranges and qualification days when you just poured it down the tube. But really though, to that point, it's strictly for the visual testing comparison that we're going to see. Nobody's really gonna run that much CLP in standard operations. All right, so here's how our testing procedure goes down. Step one, lather the hell out of the BCG and charging handle. Step two, a full side view of gas escaping the rifle, five rounds each. Step three, close up side view of each charging handle for the gas escaping, another five rounds. Step four, we are in the rearward third person kind of view uh, and we could watch the gas escaping towards the shooter, five more rounds. Each charging handle will go through the same procedure, then the next one will come in, but of course not without a thorough wipe down of the BCG and the upper receiver. Once everything is set back up, repeat steps one through four for the next handle and the next and next and so on. Hopefully we get to cover every last charging handle that claims any type of gas mitigation, which could take a few episodes to get done. Couple last notes before we all get to see the visual data for the first time together, me too. Uh, we tried to see if thermal would reveal anything more to the gas cloud, but instead we really just got some cool shots of things heating up and staying hot. So you probably just saw it as I said it. Oh, and go get signed up to win this full 6.5 Grindle upper receiver build with the Superfly Stinger Raptor handguard. Other few choice pieces, info and links are below. All right guys, here's how cameraman Sam back here set it up for us. We're going to look at each of the three charging handles. It will always be GI for first, then the Radian, and then the Breek Arms Sledgehammer, in that order. Uh, what we'll see first is each one of those at the full side view, like you see here. We'll push in on the next one, all three, and then we'll push in from behind, and along the way we'll make some notes. So let's start here. You'll see the first two rounds, and I'm extremely slow, slow-mo as we can get our camera to go without spending a fortune on a new camera. You'll see the first few frames, and then the follow-along shot will be at slow speed, not full-time speed. So let's go. GI charging handle first, and uh, here's what I want you to pay attention to. There's going to be portions throughout each one of these shots, because I've seen a little bit of it, where we'll watch gas escape and what we want to do is watch specifically for the first shots how much gas comes out of the back of the charging handle here which direction is it going to come out and in what capacity so the wider the cloud you can imagine that that means more gas uh, the faster that cloud dissipates we'll imagine that that is a good fast escape of gas so uh, with that back of the charging handle 
The magwell is interesting and the big gas cloud that comes straight out at you. Let's try this. So immediately we get a decent heavy white cloud coming out here straight towards my, the shooter's face. Pay attention to the size of this cloud as it starts and as it comes out, especially here on this first shot and the first shot of the next few charging handles. Uh, this one's pretty interesting here too, how much gas actually escapes the mag well down here. Uh, the CAC industry has a BCG that's supposed to drive more gas down there. So we're gonna probably test that later. Let's keep going on the GI charging handle here. So what I see is an explosion of little tiny chunks coming out here and it's all kind of facing out this way. But there is a steady cloud aiming back towards. You'll actually see that probably a little better in the back shot. Now, just before, as this comes back onto full speed, let's pay attention here to how much gas has come out here and how thick it is by how white, how much gas remains in the shooter's face area here. Granted, there's no wind. We're completely closed off and encased here. And how much gas kind of escapes out here? Because if you think of this as a 3D, it's actually coming out towards the camera's face. Shot number two. Same thing, cloud coming out. That first shot is really detailing of what comes out the charging handle, what comes out of the mag well, uh, and how kind of how big that initial disbursement of gas is. But I'm seeing the same kind of pattern. Uh, if we draw it out here, it's little shape, you know, to heading back towards here. The remaining gas from the last shot, we've got this big giant cloud that's esca escaping kind of towards what I would call the three, maybe 230 position if we were looking kind of down the barrel of the rifle here. All right, guys, we got the Radian Raptor SDSL. This is supposedly supposed to be the gas busting charging handle. And a uh, few visual things that I see here. Um, GI, we don't really have to talk too much about about the features. It's a standard. We all kind of know what, it, uh, what it's like with the shelf on the back and how there's no cut relief cuts or anything like that. Radian has the relief cuts all up in the front here, which is a little different take than what we'll see probably throughout most of these other charging handles that mitigate gas, uh, where my guess would be they're attempting to try to escape gas as much as they can out the front of the uh, BCG, or in front of the BCG rather than escaping backwards by putting all these forward thrusting ports uh, towards the front of the charging handle. Uh, we might also see a little more gas because of that directed down here in the magwell. So those are things to look for. What I would do, what, the first thing I would particularly pay attention to is that initial gas blast that comes right out of the back towards the shooter's face and how big that cloud surrounding the shooter is versus if it's out here, it's escaping from my face. So let's find out ultra slow-mo radian SDSL. I was luckily I was able to stop it in one of the initial frames here. What we see already is the bigger, a big set of gas already coming out of the ejection port. And pay attention, there's a little bit of gas coming, uh, but let's see how far it actually goes. Yes, yeah, lot. Look at the explosion. That when you see these sharp lines right here, that means one, there's a bunch of CLP in there. But two, uh, that helps actually identify where the forcefulness, where the most, you know, the gas, water, liquids, they all kind of tend to take the path of least resistance. In which case, if it's forcefully coming out of some of here, more of it's going to come out of there. Um, to me, I'm already seeing slightly less height and slightly less amount of gas coming back directly towards my face from the back of uh, the charging handle here. Let's keep going. This is a very compelling shot here, guys. Remember back to the GI charging handle where we saw all kinds of streaks coming down out of the magazine well. We saw already saw a decent cloud that was probably about to my cheek at this point. Now look at how, like, remember what I said about how white and how dense the gas will be. Uh, giant, gassy, white puff, which uh, you can see again, these forceful blobs of uh, burning CLP that are about to turn into gas. Uh, they're actually showing that it's shooting out of the, uh, out of the uh, ejection port cover away from the, my face. The, comparatively, how much gas is here versus what's actually right underneath my nose here? That's uh, very compelling in my eyes. Um, and watch how this gas 
cloud just sort of dissolves into something larger. It doesn't really make it too far back here behind my shoulder initially. The bulk of it, you can even trace it if you wanted to, the bulk of the gas stays in front of my nose. Uh, the only reason it looks like it's covering my face is because we're obviously facing the camera, so the gas is coming out towards the camera. But major compelling. Shot number two coming up here for the Radian Raptor SDSL. Same thing, in that GI charging handle, that gas cloud really went back behind me. Not only that, but it was narrow as it went behind me, which means it has more propulsion and it hasn't even started opening up yet, which to me, in my mind's eye, uh, seems to say that more gas is going to my face with the GI charging handle because it's so skinny, because it goes so far back, whereas here it's already dissipated outside, uh, out away from my face, not pushing back any further, further, and you see probably 80, 75, 80% of the cloud is out in front of my face. Breek Arms, Sledgehammer, the gas buster of gas busters, they say. And uh, a couple notes for me about the Sledgehammer. We'll look at, one of the things we'll look at in these charging handles as we start to test more and more, and we gain more information about what we see is differences in the shelf heights back here. If you can see the shelf height of the, that they chose for the Breek uh, Sledgehammer versus the Radian versus the GI. It is extremely tall and tall in comparison. Uh, there are relief cuts here that port the gas, I would say, off and to the right or as much as it can into the empty space uh, out to here to the side of, inside your uh, upper receiver. Let's see how it performed. Okay guys, initial blast, probably caught it about the same time as we just caught the Raptor. What we're noticing here, similar type of thing. A very low and not as uh, abrupt white cloud already heading towards my nose. Lots of escape right here at the edge of the charging handle where consequently uh, the relief cuts kind of point towards, in which case I'm um, not surprised there. And a very tight, tight cloud coming out of the ejection port cover. There is some gas, more, a little more gas escaping out here down at the bottom of the mag well, but let's keep it rolling. Now that's an interesting shape that we see here, but a couple, couple notes that I see on, the, on this shot right here. Although it is seeming like there is more gas heading towards my face, the, remember what we talked about how thick the white cloud is? This cloud is already thick and it's rolling out towards the camera. So this actually to me seems like the bulk of it, because it's so tight initially, that means the force is mostly coming towards the camera. And I bet you we'll get to see that in the next set of views when we move a little closer and then from behind. Let's keep that going though. And there it breaks up. That little puff of, of smoke, that was really interesting. Let's come back to this. That rearward puff of smoke is actually going back towards over my shoulder, towards uh, where the roundage is ejecting. So more of like your 3.34 th clock position out away from me. And it'll show in the next set. Second shot for the sledgehammer. Here we go. Bunch of the same stuff. The cloud is definitely pushing out towards the camera. That one didn't push out backwards as far but we're ready for round two. All right guys, on to test number two of the whole thing, and this is the close-up view. It's the same lockdown five shots. We're gonna see the first two, first one in super slow-mo, and follow-up shot a little faster. And there's a lot, a lot less things to pay attention to in this close-up shot, so this will go a little quicker. Remember what I said and try to pay attention to. I'll just kind of let you take your own thoughts on these ones, but gas going back, the thickness of the cloud, how much gas comes out towards the camera, how much actually goes back here, and let's find out. GI charging handle, coming up. Just gonna share some notes as we look on it. For me, uh, a lot of gas coming out here towards the camera, but there is probably the biggest offender for that initial gas cloud coming out of the back of the charging handle of the three we're testing today. Now we are on to the Radian Raptor SDSL in close-up. Same thing we just shot with the GI, uh, saw with the GI charging handle. I'll make it short and sweet. Far less gas coming out of the charging handle for me on this one. 
Similar, we're just repeating, uh, but a little bit closer than what we just saw. Last one on this close-up shot sequence. We're going again with the sledgehammer from Breek Arms. I'm gonna let, play, let you guys play through this one because the next set of shots, test number three, when we're at the third person view from behind, that'll probably be one of the most telling that you'll see today. Just looks like far less gas goes back towards my head, but one more shot here, and then we'll go into the rear view. All right, guys, this next one's pretty cool. It's phase testing number three. And, and this one, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the details like we did the last time. You guys are kind of able to see what your own eyes, what you're looking for. Uh, gas coming straight out of the back of the charging handle. How much gas escapes out here because at the end of the day, the least gas that comes to your face, the more gas that goes out to the side, the less choked up and teary-eyed you get when you're shooting your freedom can. So in that spirit, GI charging handle first. Let's go. Couple notes for me on the GI charging handle one there that we just saw. Uh, it actually, from this angle, from the rear angle, it doesn't look like as much gas is escaping out, but if you kind of pair the last two with that last one that we shot here and towards the rear of the shooter, you see how much extra gas and CLP is kind of escaping out to the left side of the firearm rather than towards the ejection port side. Uh, you can kind of piece together just how much gas there is. And, Maybe we'll come up with a sniff test for some of the next future testing. On to the Radian Raptor SDSL from the rearward position. Let's check it out. Notes on the Radian for me in this angle view, we really get to see just how fast, how much velocity and how much gas is escaping out of the ejection port before it has the time to come back towards your shooter's face. Uh, same thing uh, down here by the charging handle, the slightest of gas coming back out of the back end of the charging handle. Phase three testing for the Sledgehammer by Breek Arms. Here we go, a little different camera angle. We might cheat this way in the future. Check this out. And if you thought this testing thing was over, you're wrong because Sam hooked us up with the Brady Bunch view of each three of these charging handles in real time, as close as we could get them to sync up together as possible. Uh, lots of rewind and going forward and rewind and going forward. I'm gonna let you do that on your own. And even at the end of this down below, you'll have a link to the raw footage, just the raw footage of the shooting. But let's watch the Brady Bunch, all three phases. We'll chat after this.
You know what guys, in all honesty, there is so much to take on here and so little data that we have right now, only because we've only seen three charging handles. And like I said earlier in the video, there's probably dozens out there that I'm aware of that have some sort of gas mitigation or gas busting type of literature, either in their product descriptions or you know some of the marketing bullet points, in which case, and before we start going to jumping and making conclusions on which one's the best out of just today's test, I think we all need to see the data from the rest of the charging handles that we have planned in this test. This could go on for multiple, multiple episodes. We will keep it as close to a standard as possible. I might tweak a couple things here and there. We definitely cannot wait to see your comments and your notes down below. Hear what you thought of some of these tests. In that spirit, comment away, giveaway is down below. Don't forget to sign up for that 6.5 Grindle and check out the best charging handles for AR-15s as voted by you. It's right over there. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.